Hello and welcome. This is Mouse Gunner, and we're going to be looking at a video game called Space Engineers. Now, in case you thought I was one-dimensional based off of uh, other videos I have on my channel, uh, be it uh, firearm coverage or just the other video games I played, you might think that I just like, you know, tanks and planes and guns and uh, action games, and that's pretty much uh, all I like. But this is, I guess, uh, you know, an indicator of a game that I like that is not like that. Uh, now, there is a combat element to this game, but uh, this game is more about building, uh, which is, you know, uh, part of the, the name of the game, Engineer. It's uh, building uh, and building a world and, uh, and mining for resources to uh, build your blocks, and we'll get into a lot of that now. So to start off, we're in a new world that I loaded in just for recording. This is one of the uh, several starting choices you have. Uh, this is a pretty much a star base uh, on an asteroid. It's like uh, attached to this asteroid, and you have a number of uh, ships uh, that you have available to you as well, both small and large, uh, for you to use, and the facilities of this base to use. So it, this is a you know a start where you have a, access to a lot of already pre-built things. You can have starts where you pretty much start with nothing in the world, and you have to build from scratch. Uh, but I wanted to just demonstrate the game to you in this uh, footage and show you some of the things that uh, exist without having to put a lot of my own time into it. Uh, that's something that we can do in future videos later. So I'm going to start off with just a little bit of simple building. So right now I'm going to be building a light armor block. Uh, and just so you can see that the block I'm actually standing on right now is also light armor. So to build... I'm just going to drag my mouse to the spot I want to build a block, and then I just uh, click my mouse button and it will drop down the block. So I'm going to turn on my jetpack here to get a, bit, a little bit of a better vantage point. And we'll just go ahead and continue to build. Now you can build blocks one at a time, or you can build them uh, several at a time. And how you would build several at a time is you hold down control, you press your mouse button, and hold the mouse button in, and then just drag over. You can also build uh, a platform this way as well. Uh, and what you would do with that is hit control and shift at the same time, control, and then just drag out your blocks. And then you can uh, make several rows and columns at once. So that just gives you an idea of how to build. And then how you delete is essentially you hover over the block you want to delete, and you click the right mouse button. You could also delete several blocks at once by doing the same thing you did with uh, building multiple blocks, you hold down control and you drag a line out and it will delete everything in that line. So that's pretty much your basic building. Now a little uh, thing about my uh, my character, I'm not going to go too heavily into the controls. That's probably better for another video. But uh, it, you'll see over in the, the lower uh, right I have uh, gravity. And that's the gravity that's uh, on the station in the area that I'm in right now and you can see the direction of the, that the gravity is pulling uh, based off of that down arrow if I looked to the ground below me that arrow disappoint, disappears because that is the direction of the gravity if I turn on my jetpack and I rotate you'll notice that the the arrow rotates with me also it's uh, uh, two G's is how much strong the gravity is so the gravity on this base is a little strong uh, but that's based off of how many gravity generators are in the area, which also could be affected by uh, this large ship that's down here that also is going to have a gravity generator on it. And its close proximity may be affecting uh, our, our, uh, our Gs, but uh, seeing how I'm in this corner right now and I only have one G, I doubt that. I think it's just the base having multiple overlapping gravity uh, fields is what uh, why we're encountering two Gs. On the lower part of the screen, I have my toolbar, which is uh, consists of some of the blocks that I have readily available to me, available to me, which we'll get into a little bit uh, uh, in, a, uh, in a while as I pull up our, our main screen of blocks. But uh, in this instance, I have one, two, three, one, one through ten, uh, one being that light armor block that I built earlier, and zero being uh, you know nothing, just removing all of the blocks from my. Uh, from the building uh, screen. So uh, that just is pretty much how you operate uh, your toolbar. Over in the lower left corner, we have some conditions about myself. Now this is creative mode, and there are two modes. 
uh, creative mode and survival mode. Now, creative mode, you can pretty much build freely. Uh, cre uh, survival mode, just like uh, if you're familiar with uh, Minecraft, you have to survive in the world, uh, but it also puts building constraints on you. Uh, how, how long it takes to build things. You have to build things one at a time. You need resources to build blocks. All of those things are, are required in survival mode that is not required in creative mode. As you saw, I just free built this uh, without requiring any resources or any time to do so. Uh, now, because I'm in creative mode, a lot of those uh, things in the HUD on the lower left corner uh, don't mean a whole lot, like my health and, and things like that. They don't really mean a whole lot uh, in this mode, uh, but they are still going to be displayed. It does also show some of my other states. You can see standing, crouching, it, it switches. I have a jetpack that I can turn on and off, as you can see there. Uh, and I also have something called dampers. Now, just to explain what the dampers are, if I start flying in a direction and I, I release my movement, it's going to slow down. So I'll start speeding up as long as I, I hold down a direction, but once I let go, those dampers are going to slow me to a stop. Now, if I turn off the dampers and I start accelerating in a direction and then I stop accelerating, I'm going to continue moving in that direction at the speed uh, when I stop accelerating. The only way to stop me from moving in this direction is to rotate around the opposite direction and start accelerating in that direction to kill off my speed. Now, the problem with this is uh, that it makes the movement a lot more complex because you can oftentimes have movement in several directions, and to stop your movement, you have to reverse those that, that movement direction. Uh, so the only real way you can stop is by doing that or by turning back on your inertia dampeners, which will immediately stop you. Well, it will slow you down to a stop anyway. So that is pretty much uh, your basics of your HUD. Other things that you have in there is my speeds in meter per second, as you see as I move around. Uh, my uh, energy is, uh, again, going to be pretty much only something relevant to survival mode. Uh, it's kind of simulating maybe like, you know, having to eat, like in Minecraft. Essentially, you have to power up your suit. Uh, and keep it powered, and if you uh, run out of power, you will uh, die. So uh, that is kind of how the survival mode works. And then you have volume, and that's just how much volume I'm carrying. In survival mode, you will have a limit to how much you can carry. Uh, and a lot of that is not going to have an impact on, on creative mode, as I said. Now let's go ahead and look at what blocks we have. Uh, so this is my uh, menu for the all the block selection, and if I want to put something in my toolbar, all I have to do is click on it and bring it down to my toolbar. That was something that was already in my toolbar, so I just kind of moved from one place to another. But that's how you uh, enter things into your toolbar, and you just go through the different uh, blocks and select them. Now, if you'll note, as I have this uh, block selected, I have a cube up in my up upper right corner. And that is going to uh, tell me what the controls to change the orientation of this cockpit block. I can rotate around. I can even flip, flip it upside down, but uh, that is not a legal place for this. This only has, you know, one spot that it can legally be placed. But to give you an idea of that, uh, you know, how that works, this block can be placed in any uh, orientation uh, legally. So I can flip it. I can rotate it. I can uh, rotate it, uh, you know, in a clockwise or counterclockwise fashion. So you can change the orientation of your blocks to suit uh, how you want to build things or just how you want to make the things look. Uh, now that earlier block that I have before, because it's a basic cube, it doesn't really matter how you rotate it. But uh, you still can control the rotation, but it doesn't really do a whole lot. So uh, that's pretty much, you know, the basics of the, the HUD and just the blocks. Now to get into the resources, I guess I will, uh, first, before I do that, I wanted to show you just uh, a little bit of the difference between uh, small uh, ships and the larger ships and the stations. So you, it's good to not turn off your jetpack when you're uh, not over top something or your fall. Now there is spots, I guess I didn't show you this earlier, where there will be no gravity and that's because you're outside a gravity generator. So if I turn off my jetpack now, I'll just float in space. I won't fall. But if I'm in a gravity field when I turn off my jetpack, I'll fall to the ground like so. Now if I was in survival mode, that would have probably killed me, that kind of uh, fall distance. But uh, as I'm in creative mode and their damage is turned off, it is fine. So we have a ship here, and there are various blocks uh, that you know you can build in this ship to build a vast variety of uh, objects. 
And one thing they will note down here is this ship has uh, landing gears. Now the landing gears are turned yellow like that to indicate that it's in close proximity to something that it can lock into. So if I go over to the cockpit, you'll see that there's a little box that hovers over that cockpit. That tells me I can now enter the cockpit. And if I look at these landing gears, they're still yellow, but if I hit the control to lock them in, they'll turn green and that indicates to me that I am now locked in. Even if I control my ship to try and lift off, I won't move. Uh, so that is, you know, how the landing gears work. But, you know, one of the big advantages of that is I could lock into my landing gear on that uh, larger ship over there. And the, sh the larger ship could move away, but this ship would stay glued to it and not float off. You can also use these landing gears to grab onto other ships and, and uh, uh, tow them if you would like. Uh, now, uh, other blocks that I have on the ship, I'm going to go ahead and lift off here a bit. Other, other blocks that I have on this ship, well, uh, before I actually tell you about that, you might have noticed that there is a damage and deformation in this, uh, this game. Uh, it's not 100% clear, but the, uh, the deck of this uh, station actually was damaged by my thrusters as I was lifting off. That is something that uh, you have to be aware of with your, with your engines, uh, that you are careful not to uh, thrust near, uh, you know, the, the different blocks. So just to demonstrate again, I'm going to lower down to this, uh, the station, until I can lock in my, my gear, and I'm just going to start thrusting, and you'll see that as the deck deformed there, under my, my thrust, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, you'll see that, that, that it started deforming, because that is... Uh, that the, uh, the actual deck was being damaged. Uh, and, and if we look down at the, uh, the deck here, you'll note that it's now really uh, deformed in there. Uh, there is deformation on, on uh, all these blocks, and uh, there is also collision damage, which I hope to show you in maybe another video. But the, uh, the ship actually has uh, systems on it, and I actually do have weapons. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and enter those into my toolbar so I have access to them. And just to show you how it works, so you'll see I have these little uh, laser uh, dots. Those are where the, uh, the uh, weapons are aiming. So I'm going to go ahead and fire my weapons, and as you see, my rockets came out, and you see the, uh, the terrain deformation as those rockets blew up the uh, asteroid. I also have the Gatling guns, which are not going to really deform the train as, uh, nearly as much uh, as well. Uh, now this ship is pretty uh, heavily gyroed up. Essentially gyroscopes are going to control your rotation of the ship, and because this, this ship has really heavy gyros, and, uh, uh, well more gyros than it really needs, and the gyros are cranked up higher than it probably needs, it, it's kind of a handful to control <laughs> as it spins around wildly. Uh, but there are a uh, number of systems on the ship that are very interesting. Here we have a conveyor system, which are these, these uh, pipe-looking things with the yellow lights. Now that's going to uh, carry supplies throughout the ship, and if you follow the, the, the uh, conveyor system, it actually does go to the Gatling guns here. So it will supply these Gatling guns with, uh, with um, supplies uh, that are elsewhere in the ship. So if I go over to this cargo container here, I can access the inventory of the small cargo container. There is nothing in this inventory, but because it's connected to the conveyor system, I can access other things that are in the conveyor system, and I can move them around to the other uh, things. So I can put this uranium, which is in the small reactor, which is what's going to power the reactor. I can uh, move the uranium into cargo to the box I'm currently uh, uh, using, or I can move it to another reactor. And, and through that, I can just move supplies through the ship, and that's the, you know, what that uh, conveyor system, how it works. So you can also, for, for instance, the Gatling guns, if you had ammunition and storage, you can move it uh, through the control bar, which you can access inside the ship. Uh, you can move the ammunition from storage into your Gatling guns and reload them. So, uh, you know, it's very interesting, all the different various things you can do with all these blocks. And... The, the developers are very dedicated to this game. They are offering uh, updates uh, on a pretty consistent basis, on pretty much a weekly basis. So uh, last week, as, as of the time that I uh, recorded this, uh, I had an update. And just to show you, uh, first off, they added on these like emoticon or emotional state uh, little animations uh, into the game just this last week. 
uh, and they also added a number of blocks, these catwalk blocks. Now this block existed before, but these three blocks are new, as well as this control panel. Those are all new blocks, and those are things that uh, the developers uh, pretty much add in on a weekly basis. So uh, in a day or two, I'm, we're going to have another update. I don't really know what that update's going to be, but, and they're kind of surprises every time. But And each and every week, you have a number of features that are added to the game. Some of them are more functional, and some of them actually add in... Uh, blocks, as I discussed before, uh, into the game, so you have more and more things to build with. Uh, and just to show you some of the variety, now you do have combat-oriented blocks, like uh, this uh, this rocket turret here, and uh, the uh, the small ship and the large ships are going to have different size blocks. So as you can see with this ship, the block that I have here is only this size, but with a large uh, stations and large ships, the block is going to be significantly larger. So there is a difference in the size blocks and what blocks you can build on, on the different types of, uh, of ships and stations will differ. Certain things you can only build on like the larger uh, ships and stations and certain things you can only build on the uh, the uh, small ships. But just to give you an idea, uh, the large ships are just pretty much the same as your, your stations. They just, they can move about. They have engines and they can move. Whereas the stations, they are stationary. Uh, as you can probably guess by the name. Uh, and to give you uh, an idea of a little bit of how the survival mode works and how you would build things. So in the survival mode, and I guess I just want to do the little the hand wave thing here because that's a newer thing that they added into the game. Uh, they, um, you have tools. You uh, Well, there is a, a rifle that you have access to, but you also have a welder, which is how you're going to build in survival mode. Uh, and grind, the grinder is going to deconstruct things in survival mode, and then your hand drill is how you mine. And mining is a, an important part of this game because it's how you a, uh, gain access to the resources in the game. So if I go down to this, uh, this hole, this crater that I created, I can mine into the rock, and you'll see the terrain will deform as I mine, and these rocks will pop off. Now as those rocks pop off, I can go down and collect them, and uh, gain, uh, these are just stone, but I can pick up the stone, and uh, if I look in my inventory, once I'm done picking them up, I see that I now have 352 kilograms of stone. And now I can uh, refine that stone, uh, which I'm going to show you in a bit here, but Another thing that you have when you have the drill is it actually shows you where other resources is, uh, are. So uh, where I am right now, there is 8 meters from me in this direction, some iron. 23 meters away from me, there's some platinum. And uh, you know, as you go through the world, you'll encounter uh, different resources with your, your drill that will let you know where they are. And those different resources, you need to take the raw ore and... Uh, refine them into the uh, the resources, uh, and I'm not exactly sure the layout of the station. I don't typically play with this station, uh, but we'll, we'll go try and find a refinery so that we can refine our rock. Looks like we yeah here's one <laughs> up ahead. So if I go into this refinery, I can take the stone and put it in my refinery, and that will uh, turn the, the stone into gravel. And that, that gravel I will use as uh, that resource, and I'll put it in an assembler. I'm not really sure where an assembler is in the ship. Uh, and I'm not really going to find one, but essentially, uh, in the uh, assembler, you're going to take those, uh, those resources, and you're going to turn them into finished parts. And those finished parts are what you use to build your block. So if I look at my screen here, uh, if we find our light armor block, which is what I was building with before, you see that there is, uh, in the components over on the left side, it says uh, for the large ship and station, it requires 25 steel plates to build one block, or if it's a small ship, it only takes one steel plate to build. And the various, uh, the, the various blocks are going to take very, you know, the different uh, resources to construct. And by uh, looking at you know, the, the uh, blocks in your, your menu here, you can see what you need to uh, build those resources. And if you uh, get to a refinery, it will tell you uh, what uh, what resources build each part so that you can so that you can uh, 
you know, build each block. And so in survival mode, that's essentially how it's going to work. You get your resources, you set up the block, you get your welder out, you finish the block, and then uh, you're done with that block and you move on to the next. So we're going to do a little bit of building here, just to demonstrate uh, some of the building and uh, with uh, even more of your options. So we've got a, a window pane here. Uh, we're actually going to select these ones uh, and we can uh, rotate this around to the orientation I want. And I'm just going to uh, build this across. And as you can see, that this is pretty much a, a one-way, well, it's not really a one-way window, but it's, you know, I got a darker tint on the other side. So on this side, I can see pretty clearly. On the other side, it's, you know, darker. So if this was the exterior of a ship or a station, as it kind of is in this, uh, this our little uh, building experiment here, it's darker on this side. You can still see through, but, uh, you know, it's a little bit harder to see through. Now, you can also, just with the variety and, you know, the open-ended uh, options you have to building, you can also do a similar thing with, with another block. Now, this is more of a, a grate rather than uh, a window, but it's another block that will, uh, will block off an area so you can't move through it, but you can still see through it. So, it's just uh, two different options to do the same thing. And, you know, this is, a, as I said, a, a game that the developers are very dedicated to. Uh, they spend a lot of time, uh, you know, to, uh, expanding this game regularly. And uh, as I said, they have updates on a weekly basis, but they also uh, do a very good job of listening to the community. And an example of that is this is something that the piston block is something the community has been asking for for, for some time. And it's something that they, they added to the game uh, fairly recently. And just to show you what I can do with the piston block to show you some of the variety of the game is I can try and construct an elevator. So that's what I'm going to try and do here uh, is construct an elevator and... Uh, that's going to require uh, one of the blocks that uh, that came with the uh, piston block, which is somewhere in here. There it is. So I'm going to need this block so that I can build right up to uh, my uh, my plat the uh, little archway I have here. So I'm going to rotate this around so that I can place it legally. And now by doing that, I've built right up to my platform, so I can just walk right over and then. Uh, I'm going to use a, a another uh, system that was added very recently. I've only had a little bit of experimentation with this, and it just essentially it's just a uh, oop, back up a little bit. There we go. It's just a control panel, so I can find our piston in the control panel. So they have all the ship systems. Uh, I mean, all the uh, systems in the station. So there's quite a lot because this is a sizable station, but it's listed alphabetically. You can group things and rename them so that you can uh, find them more easily. But here's my piston, and to control the piston, essentially, I'm just going to hit reverse, and that's going to start it up. And if I uh, get out of my body here, you can see that we're rising up on the piston. And, you know, it's, it's going pretty slowly, but that's because it was set to go slowly. Uh, and switch back to first person mode. Oh, I'm gliding around a, a, quite a bit on this uh, block. I'm not really sure why that is. Okay, so now I can uh, lower the uh, piston just by reversing the process and just show you some of the controls of, of, of the piston and kind of what you uh, face in the control panel is I can set the parameters of this piston. So I can set it to go faster. Uh, you know, that's the velocity is how quickly it uh, moves. Uh, with something like an elevator, you don't want to move it moving too quickly because then the motion is too is too violent and uh, you might you might get catapulted up into a ceiling or something and hurt if you're in survival mode. You can set the maximum and minimum distance so you can control you can control how high or low it uh, it will raise. So just to lower it, all I have to do is hit reverse, or I could manually lower the speed itself. But if you wanted to have a set speed, essentially you set it to like 0.5, and then when you hit reverse, it's going to go to negative 0.5. And if I hop off the uh, the piston, you can see it contracting and pulling the, uh, the platform down. And that's pretty much how an elevator works. So it's, you know, it didn't take me a whole lot of time to build this. Uh, and if, 
you're able to you know uh, you know think through things and, and use the blocks creatively there's so many things that you can build with this and that's one of the great things about this game is just the wide variety of what you can build but it's also the immersion of what you can build I mean uh, after I set all this up uh, and I can just you know walk over to this control panel uh, hit the controls to move my elevator and I you know and go on up to the next floor and and I don't really have to uh, you know leave that immersion it, it really aids the immersion all the things that you can do making this feel like you know a real uh, world a real uh, space station so in that regard it's it's a great game and it has an educational element to it I mean the fact that you're you're doing all this building and you have to do a lot of creative thinking to build the various things and, and do it in a way that you know you want to you build almost like your vision uh, and, and you can draw various uh, inspirations maybe you're a Star Trek fan or some kind of uh, other science fiction source uh, fan like Star Wars or what have you and you want to build a world of revolving around that uh, now, and this is a game that allows you to do that now uh, there are still constraints because they're still developing the game and you know they're adding blocks on and, and functionality on but uh, as that functionality comes you can do more and more immersive things and more and more creative things uh, to you to your world and, and that way it's it's a really great game and it's one that I really enjoy so I hope you've enjoyed my coverage of Space Engineers it's something I I plan on playing in the future and hopefully I can cover it in the future if you guys you know really like to see it regardless of whether you like to see it I'm going to be playing it because I just find it a very fascinating game and it, it's a game that is so many things and in, in, in one it's it's a as I said, it's it's a survival game. It's an action game. It's a building game. It it is so many things, and and for that reason, I, I really I really uh, enjoy it. And the fact that it is updated all the time, so often, uh, it it's very hard uh, to get really all that bored with it because uh, you you're constantly learning uh, the new functionalities that get introduced uh, at a, you know at a steady pace. So as I said, I hope you've enjoyed this coverage. This is Mouse Gunner. Signing out.